Okay, today I am going to be taking this urchin fossil and I think I can see some kind of interesting structure inside there that might be evidence of soft tissues, might be evidence of how the thing crystallised when it was fossilising, might just be surface dirt, we don't know. The more likely explanations are also the less exciting explanations. So anyway, there's only one way to be really sure about this, which is to grind it flat polish it really smooth, and then we can have a look and see if that reveals any structure inside. So this is a fossil composed of flint, and flint is actually quite a hard mineral. It's uh, number seven on the Mohs scale with a deeper groove at level eight, and that makes it quite difficult to grind down. So we're going to be using something that's harder than flint to grind it down. We could use diamonds, obviously, because diamonds are level 10 on Mohs scale. But we can go a bit cheaper than diamonds. We've got silicon carbide abrasive here, which is 9.5 on Mohs scale. And so I've got a selection of different abrasives. I've got 240 grit all the way up to 2000 grit in various increments. So, we're going to grind this down by lapping it on silicon carbide paper. In fact, well, a series of silicon carbide papers. But we can't just do that on its own. So, I've got a piece of glass here, fairly thickish glass, with some little rubber feet underneath it, which are going to help us to keep that flat. It's not going to be engineering flat surface, but flat enough for what we need to do today. And I'm going to wet grind this, because I don't really want dust from this to go into my lungs, but also wet grinding it will just make it easier and provide a better finish. So, I've also got a tray. So we'll put our piece of glass inside the tray, put our abrasive on top of the glass, we'll wet it down and away we go. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. So without further ado, a bit of water on there and off we go. And I'm just going to... So let's see, that has just begun to take the edge off of that little raised lip there on the side. So this is going to be a long and laborious process. So I think what we need now is a time lapse. Okay, right, yeah, I think it's going to be time to stop now, at least for now, because uh, I've been at this a very long time. My arms are aching from all this polishing, and it's starting to be diminishing returns now. It turns out that polishing flint or chert, whichever you want to call this, with wet and dry paper is really, really hard work. And as the area of polished surface increases, the progress decreases because obviously I'm wearing away a larger area as I go. But the question has kind of been answered now in that, well, let's have a close look at this. So the features I thought were internal structure of this urchin, they're most likely just blotchiness of the silica minerals that have filled in the inside here. What's very interesting here is that even with 180 grit abrasive, the surface finish here is really, really smooth. It's like glass. So I think that's probably a testament to the hardness of this material. I did start off with 240 grit and got about halfway through and realized I wasn't removing material fast enough. So I went back down to 180 grit. So most of this has been done with 180 grit abrasive. But even then, after hours and hours and hours of grinding, 
we're still probably only about halfway. So those bits there that you see that are not ground, there's probably about another millimeter to go there. So I am gonna stop now because as I say, the question is answered. There are various little blobs and different structures in there, but I think they are just blotchiness of the silica mineral. So I'm gonna stop grinding as far as this video is concerned now, because I thought you would wanna see that sooner rather than later. But I will revisit this. I think I'm gonna try and make some sort of diamond disc grinding machine. I can't afford to buy one, but I will make one and we'll try and grind this down properly and polish it. And while we're there, I think we might have a go at grinding a few other things because from a beach just down the way from this, I've picked up a couple of other interesting things. This I think is banded chert, which is quite uncommon on the beaches around me, but most of the beaches are just flint or what or chert, same thing depending on what you want to call it. But I found this one on Hailing Island and I think it's banded chert. So it'll be interesting to grind that down and maybe try and make some sort of pendant or something out of that and see whether those bands go all the way through the material. They may or they may not. They might just be a surface phenomenon or they might be all the way through. And I found this, which is odd because again, it looks like a piece of chert, but actually it's got a deep red color and some kind of almost banding there. So I don't know whether this could be a piece of jasper or whether it's just a piece of red flint or whether it's a piece of flint that's red because it's been underneath a beach fire. So maybe somebody lit a fire of driftwood and some of these pebbles on that beach go red when they're cooked. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a bit of a disappointment for you, but that's as far as I got on this one and my arms are aching and I'm gonna fall off, so I'm gonna stop there. But the internal structure of this urchin is not anatomy as far as I can see. One thing I nearly forgot to tell you about with this is that some of it's really very transparent. So you can see I've got a laser pointer there. For the most part, it doesn't penetrate into the material at all, but there are just a few places, especially at the edge here, where you can see that it's almost as clear as glass and the light will penetrate into it quite a long way. Elsewhere, not so much, but around the edges, it's almost like it's a agate type of material. So perhaps we'll see more of that when I polish away this top surface some more, because one thing I have noticed as well is that this material tends to be darker or more transparent when it's wet. So the flint material is actually absorbing a little bit of water, presumably into tiny fractures and filling them up. As that dries out, it will turn much paler and more opaque. So I hope that was a little bit interesting, even though we did only really get halfway with this, we got as far as we needed to, to be able to establish that the internal stuff there is not anatomy. I hope that's been interesting. As I say, we will revisit this later on when I've got some proper diamond abrasives. So I look forward to doing that in future. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.